Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial, this one on how to lace and finish some needlework using a signed and numbered frame. This is a specific finish, but you'll be able to find nice tips and tricks on framing needlework no matter what you're finishing. So a special shout out to my Bird Crush Club members uh, because I'm going to be using the April Bird of the Month for this tutorial. So all of my birds I finished using these nice frames from Signed and Numbered on Etsy. I will link them down below. If you have never framed a piece of needlework before, this will be a wonderful first project for you. I have a very lazy way of framing needlework that is very beginner friendly. And if you're going to frame in one of these round frames, it's super easy. I'm going to give you all my tricks that I have learned after framing probably 65 pieces of needlework. <laughs> I do it all the time. And so I've learned some things and I will share them all with you. First off, let's talk supplies. You're going to need your finished and ironed needlework. I'm going to show you how I iron mine in just a second. You're also going to need the frame you picked out, a pair of scissors, a sturdy embroidery needle, with a sharp tip, it can be as big as you want, and some upholstery thread. Now I don't have very many soap boxes in life, but I do have a sermon prepared on upholstery thread because this is one of my issues, okay? You need to lace with upholstery thread. Can you use a few strands of embroidery floss? Sure, you can. Can you use some sulky 12 weight cotton thread? Yes, you can. In fact, that's what I'm going to be lacing with right now, but only because it is red and I wanted you to be able to see what I was doing. You need to use upholstery thread. Number one, because it's super strong. It's made to hold together chairs that your whole body sits in. Number two, it is nylon. It does not not up on itself. We all know what happens when you have a four foot length of cotton floss. The devil gets into it and makes you want to run down the street screaming. So do yourself a favor and use upholstery thread. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Send me some chocolate if you use this tip. Let's talk ironing. You're going to need your finished needlework, a hot iron, and I love Mary Ellen's Best Press, recommended to me by Vanna the Twisted Stitcher. I would put a nice clean towel over your ironing board to give it extra cushion. Put your needlework face down. I forgot to say that. It's very important. Do not iron your needlework with the face up where you're putting your iron on your precious stitches that you labored so hard over because you know what's going to happen. Your iron is going to suddenly have an asthma attack and do something very bad. Put your needlework face down. Thank you. You are going to gently run your fingers across it back and forth to see if you have any thread bits that you should have trimmed off but forgot and you want to trim those off because they will show through to the front. You're going to spritz it with some Mary Ellen's and then gently with some pressure iron out the wrinkles. Now if you stitched on linen you want to be a little careful because linen is extra floppy and you can iron your piece so that it's then sitting crookedly. So take a look at your linen fibers, make sure they're pretty vertical and pretty horizontal. They're not going all wonky and diagonal and just keep pressing and rubbing out the wrinkles. I, I am not super fussy about much. Uh, you can see I'm just ironing it with a hot iron and making sure I'm not accidentally pushing my piece into a diagonal position. So flip it over, make sure you don't see any wrinkles. You might take it over to some natural lighting. I have been in the basement ironing and thought something didn't have wrinkles. 
came upstairs, turned out there was just stuff I couldn't see. So keep on going. You can repeat the process until you're sure there's no wrinkles. Another place wrinkles like to hide is in between elements of stitching. And so uh, look in between sections to make sure there's no wrinkles uh, in between the dense stitching. Your frame from Signed and Numbered has three different parts in the back. You have the backer board, you have the foam core. No, I do not know if this is archival and acid free, but I go ahead and use it. If that's a worry for you, you could replace it if you want. It also comes with a piece of glass. I usually ask that they don't send glass, but I forgot this time. I don't use the glass, but the frame is so deep that you definitely could. There's no spacing issues on the back. You can see that we're going to need to cover that whole square. So there's sections that you can't see. We're going to cover over using this foam core. So here's what you want to do. We need this bird to be right in the middle of that circle. This is super easy. Here's what I do. I throw the piece of needlework on there where I think it will possibly be in the middle and then I put it in the frame. I have designed the Bird Crush Club pieces to not be totally up against the edge but if you wanted to stick some stitching right on the edge you could. Um, so they're pretty forgiving in that way. I just kind of mess with it in the back, gently pulling it up and down, back and forth until I like exactly where it is. And this is easy to do. There's a nice little bit of tension in the back where it will kind of just stay where you want it. Now, if you're super lazy, I don't think anybody would know if you stopped here but we're gonna pretend like we're professionals and actually lace the needlework. Now, this piece has some long stitches. Did you see me touch them? This is not going to be a problem. I have some long back stitches in that tail and that's why I need to lace this. If it was all full cross, I'd be mighty tempted to not lace, but alas and alack, we've got those back stitches on there. <laughs> I'm gonna need some tension. So all I do is play with it, play, 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 and then I'm going to flip it back over and I'm going to gently pop it out, trying not to move the linen very much. I like to start with the side that doesn't have as much fabric, so I'm just going to gently get that out of the way. I'm holding it with my hands where I wanted the needlework and we are ready to start lacing. So get out that floss and thread up that embroidery needle. I have laced so much that I feel like I could do it in my sleep. I like to keep the spool of thread up there on the right hand corner. If you're left handed, you might want to do the opposite. So we're just going to enter in uh, about half an inch from the top and go across. Now the first few stitches the linen is going to flop back and forth and be really annoying and you're going to be like, what am I doing? This is frustrating. Don't worry, it gets a little bit easier after the first few passes. So I've made a little stitch. I go in and then back in. This is a little bit different from my first tutorial on lacing where I just went back and forth, back and forth. You can see I'm making a little stitch. You go on the inside of the linen and then you go back in on the outside and make a little stitch. You try to move evenly back and forth across. If you run out of floss, no big deal. You just thread some more from the spool there. I am not making these stitches tight. I'm simply getting the stitches in. I'm not worrying about the tension or anything. I'm just worrying about the evenness and going back and forth and getting to the bottom. No big deal. Thank you.
So here I am getting closer to the bottom. Oh, what's that? Oh, the sulky. It's tangling a little bit and stressing me out. Doesn't happen with embroidery thread ever. Moving on. So I'm getting closer to the bottom. I just go most of the way down. I'm going to flip this over. I have not tightened it. I'm just checking it out. Seeing how it looks in my frame. Uh, it might have moved a little bit as you were moving it everywhere. No big deal. Just adjust it some more from the back. Uh, we're just making sure it's in the right place before we tighten up the lacing like a lady's corset. Right? Make sure it is in the right spot. So... Putting it back down, I'm going to show you now how to uh, knot up that thread on the bottom. So if you have way too much left over, uh, just cut it, cut it down. Um, I'm saying if you have too much in your needle, cut that down so that you don't have an annoying amount of thread to work with on the bottom. Uh, I'm making one last stitch across, and then I'm going to show you how to knot it up. Here we go, here's the last pass. I'm going to enter in and I am gonna show you a nice little close up here. So my thread is through. I'm just gonna take a little stitch off to the side, not anything to do with where I just came up. Taking a little stitch. With my finger and thumb, I'm gonna hold the thread so it doesn't go all the way through. So you can see I have that loop. I'm going to go back in through that loop, and that is going to make a knot. So I'm going to pull, pull tight to make that little knot. I do the same thing in about the same place three times just to secure my thread, and then I snip it off, the tail that is. Third knot, and snip it. And now comes the fun part. Starting at the bottom where you just made your knot, you're going to gently tighten up your lacing from the bottom to the top. You're going to gather just a little bit more slack each time you go. So you're going to pull in the same direction every other thread until you get to the top. And you want this to keep the same kind of tension throughout. You don't want to go crazy, you don't want to have super puckering going down along the sides of your needlework, but you do want it to be uh, nice and firm. Now, I like my tension. I'm going to cut the thread off the spool. It's been connected to the spool this whole time. You can let go and it's not going to completely destroy what you just did in tightening it. Uh, go ahead and thread your needle up again. Retighten it a little bit and then you're going to do exactly what you just did on the bottom in going across with that last stitch and making a knot. Knot it three times and cut it just like before. Now that we have one side completely done, I'm going to do another frame check. So I'm just checking my work on the front. I did notice that those long stitches that are back stitches are still looking wobbly, but never fear, those will straighten up once we get all four sides done. So popping it in and adjusting it a bit, making sure it's still right where I want it to be. It might have adjusted while I was uh, lacing up the back. This is a very forgiving process. Even if uh, you are off half an inch, you pulled it too far one side, you can just adjust it more. And I'm just gonna fiddle with it until I like it. And I'm gonna flip it over and do the other side. So you can see I'm in position again, got that spool up there on the right hand corner. Now the second side is just a little more tricky in that you have that double thickness of flap there. 
I would encourage you to just ignore that extra fabric. You want to focus on, see I'm sticking my fingers in there and giving it a nice turn. You want to focus on how that outer layer of fabric is behaving along the edge of the foam core and don't worry what it's looking like on the back. Just try to keep it tucked in as neatly as you can. You can see you have that little triangle sticking out, no worries. Uh, I only worry about cutting some of that fabric back when I have a very shallow frame, so I need every little centimeter of space on the back to close it up. These frames are nice and thick, so I'm not going to worry about cutting anything. Going back and forth with my stitches, just like before. I have gotten to the bottom. Just like before, I'm going to take those last couple stitches and then I'm going to knot my thread and cut it off. Snip, snip. Then I'm going to stick it back in the frame and this is going to be my last free I'm finished frame check. Uh, took a look at those long stitches and I can tell that they are going to need just a bit more tension than I normally use, but those are nice long back stitches so I want them to be happy and straight. So I'm going to pull a little bit tighter on this second side just to make sure those even out. And starting from my knot on the bottom, I'm going to work my way up just like before. My camera cut off the last flip over, but you're going to want to put your brads down, seal it tight, and then knock this peg into the hole if you would like to sit this on a shelf. Here is my final project. I am so loving how this little bird is looking so sweet. My linen threads are nice and straight, although if you're going to stare at my linen threads, you're not welcome at my house. <laughs> the back stitches are looking great. I think she looks lovely. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you would like to know how I do other things related to cross stitch, leave me a comment down below. I would love to be able to help. You can check out my bird crush club at lindystitches.com. Thank you friends. Have a lovely stitchy day. Bye!